NFL yep. Network reporter Jane Slater. So good to have you. Welcome. Thanks for having on me. Undisputed. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to start with you. What is the latest with Zeke? You know, I love that you brought up the Todd Gurley deal, yeah. wanting to be paid as much as Todd Gurley. You brought up an interesting point about Todd Gurley didn't deserve Todd Gurley money. That's how I'm told the Cowboys see it. They're trying to reset the market here. Mm. Now it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on the other side because we know his value to this offense. Without Ezekiel Elliott, you're replacing over 2,000 yards of total offense. They brought in Alfred Morris because this was a veteran back that had been on their radar because he knew this offense, and they have two yeah. rookie running backs. But he was a thought if Zeke got hurt. Can he carry the load? He was averaging 4.3 yards per carry during the five starts during the six-game suspension, so they have confidence in him. And they're certainly insulated better this season with Jason Witten, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Randall Cobb. But I think everyone can agree. When you look at the stats and you look at what he means to this team, Ezekiel Elliott gives him the best shot to go to Miami. Okay, so given what you know, given what you've reported, given what you've heard, gut feeling, does Zeke miss real games and continue to hold out? The question you have to ask yourself, how broke is Zeke? Can he afford to miss game checks? He missed six game checks during his suspension. Hmm. My thought is that this is not going to turn into a Le'Veon Bell situation. This isn't a situation like Pittsburgh, and here's why. The players who speak to me freely, the players who've gone on the record, the coach, they all want him here. Jason Garrett's going to need a new deal done soon. Mm -hmm. Amari Cooper is working on a deal. Dak Prescott's working on a deal. They have all been in communication with him. I was told that Jason Garrett got an encouraging text from Ezekiel Elliott oh. two nights ago. I'll take Dak that. Dak Prescott right. on our air on the NFL Network said he's been in communication with Ezekiel Elliott. I believe this is management team saying use your leverage now, get the deal done. But I believe that Zeke wants to be here. He talked about it. It bothered him being away from the team and being a part of a team that I think a lot of people believe has a legitimate yeah. shot to make that push in the postseason. Well, I agree with everything you said. But in order for him to get his money, the only leverage he has is holding out. Mm -hmm. That's the only leverage. They're not doing this deal. He shows up to camp, and he's happy-go-lucky. They're not doing the deal. He says, I, I believe that I'm better than Todd Gurley. And whether you believe someone is better or not, it's the guy that signs the deal last that gets the most money. So you're trying to reset a market, but it's like, let somebody else reset the market. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sit it with me after I've led the league in rushing two of the last three years. Shannon, I believe the issue isn't so much, is he better than Todd Gurley? Mm -hmm. It's risk and reward. Right. If there had not been an incident this summer in Vegas and Jerry's legal envoy hadn't been there, mm. this recent uh, legal case that's come forward where the Cowboys are once again finding themselves in the mix, defending Ezekiel Elliott, Jerry Jones going to bat for him after mm -hmm. the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. being feted as the owner of the century and three weeks later going on the record in a, in a controversial case that was sort of muddy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and putting his neck out there, yep. that's where things get a little muddy here. Again, I don't think it's the big holdout for them. Mm -hmm. I, they're invested in Zeke. They believe in Zeke. But you did watch that All or Nothing special on Amazon, did you not? Yes, I when did. When <laughs> Jerry Jones was not across from the table from Zeke but right next to him, pats him on the, mm -hmm. the leg there and yeah. says, I went to bat for you. I think that that is being reminded in these negotiations. We want to get you paid, but there is a level to what we're willing to pay because we've got to pay these other guys. Jane, but if I if I get a, if I buy a snake and knowing he's going to get big and he ends up biting me, what did you expect? I they agree. knew Zeke. They knew Jane's Zeke. not going to buy a snake. No, they <laughs> knew this about I Zeke agree. when they drafted him. Yeah. They took him fourth overall. He was everything they hoped he would be on the field and everything they thought he would be off of it, and they still took him. So now you want to hold that against him. You knew what you were getting. Okay, but but I we don't know that they're holding it against him. Mm -hmm. I mean, they feel like they've made a fair offer, and you're right, but – Jerry's not afraid of risk. Look at Jalen Smith. Yeah. That paid off for him. Yes. Randy Gregory, to be determined. David yeah. Irving did not. Demarcus Lawrence. Paid off for him. Mm. Yeah. And, but, but look at the way they played that out in the media, too. That thing got a little acrimonious as well. And then Demarcus Lawrence got paid. Demarcus Lawrence said, I'm going to have surgery in June. Y'all don't give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having surgery in June. No, no threat. Uh, yeah, Sorry. okay. They got it done. I think Jane suggested early on that Zeke is not keen on missing real game checks. So you've Jerry's got that on his side. So I think she suggest her gut feeling is mine. It will get done before the real games start. Right. Okay. 
which leads to the next question. Do you believe DAC will get done sooner than later? I do. There's been okay. no indication out of either camp that it's not going to get done. And they know that they've got to pay him. If anything, the Cowboys should have gotten this thing done before Carson Wentz. Carson uh, Wentz set the market. I told you. I, so this, is, this <laughs> yeah, to me, was on the Cowboys. <laughs> they realized they his value. No, no, no. 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 They, oh, so would, no. they wouldn't have made the investment, and Kellen Moore is the OC and made a change there, brought in John Kitna, and by Dak showing up at camp, showing that he's bought in, the guys love him. We right. saw that his rookie season. There was a reason why Tony Romo, who came back healthy and was beloved by the front office, didn't have an opportunity to even compete for his job back. They don't go all in on a guy and then not pay him. Uh huh. What's Skip? What have I been? So what? So let, you tell me that uh, Carson Wentz is overpaid. Oh, do they want to set the reset the quarterback market with Dak Prescott? Mm-hmm. Like they're trying to do it with Ezekiel Elliott? Maybe. I don't think so. Maybe he'll take a little hometown. Ain't no hometown. Discount. Jane Taylor made no hometown discount. Yeah. If I'm Dak, are you taking a hometown discount? Mm. Everybody except Skip mm. knows that he shouldn't take no discount. Mm. And Amari. He just saw what Michael Thomas, did you see that money, Jane? And, you know, I've said this on air at NFL Network. Amari is one of the smartest guys in that locker room. He plays chess Uh during the the media Uh breakouts in there. And when you get him to break down plays for you, doesn't love to talk to the media much. And his team isn't talking to the media either. We don't know what the numbers are involved. But I do know that in Michael Thomas' mind, $20 was the number that was set. That was the number he wanted, and he got it. Amari was sitting there waiting to see what that money was. Don't be surprised if very soon we hear Amari Cooper potentially being the highest paid wide receiver. By the way, Michael Thomas got the most money in NFL history for a non-quarterback offensive player. Skip. Mm. Ah. Mm. How you pay him? And that's the dilemma that you have. You, it's a, it, Skip says, well, that's a great problem to have. It is until they come up for contracts. Mm-hmm. Because there's no way, the way when you have a cap, there's no way you can pay all your great players, Skip. You're going to have to lose them. Mm. Jalen Smith. Or somebody's going to have to sacrifice a little here and a Jay. little there. Or you get creative. Mm-hmm. Nobody get creative. can get more creative than Jerry Jones. He creates cap loopholes. As, <laughs> as long as you create that direct deposit in my account for about $60 million, <laughs> create it how you want them. You're good. Mm. Oh. But Jerry at 77 knows he's close. He's been talking about that window closing for years. Oh, yeah. This is probably the best team that he's had since 2014. I would, I would be shocked if Jerry doesn't figure out a way to make these numbers work and have these guys here. Ditto. Hey. And that's before this regular season starts. Well, right now, Skip, okay. Jane said the window's closing. Say it's a very small. Right now, it's a stick in the window. Mm. <laughs> and it's about to break. It's about to break, Skip, because mm. when the stick breaks, the window mm. closes. Well, that's your only hope. <laughs> well, Skip, I don't hate. Okay. Skip, I, I, want, I want the Cowboys to be successful. The more successful they are, the more, the more, you know, you and I can engage. Uh-huh. It ain't going to happen, though. Mm. To the outside, they just here. feel very colorful, Skip. Mm-hmm. For those of us on the inside, mm-hmm. it sort of feels like, you know, it's it's dysfunctional, but it's your family. Mm-hmm. And so when you cover the team and you, you – I think we're a little bit more tempered and measured in handling this team uh-huh. because we've seen it over the years. Okay, back to Zeke. I believe you reported – or you were one of the first to report he went to Cabo mm-hmm. and that – somebody upstairs not real happy with that, and I assume that goes all the way to the top. So how much, how angry has Jerry gotten in your your estimation over all of Zeke's behavior, not showing up and then going to Cabo? It didn't help the situation, Mm -hmm. Skip. I think uh, if he had had training camp in Wyoming, the Cowboys would have been fine with it. He went and did this during the six-game suspension. And might I preface this by saying his agent, Rocky Arsenault, has a place there at this Diamante resort. Mm -hmm. And he put out the video and the pictures, and he did come back ready to get after it after the suspension. In better shape than when he left. Right. So the hope is that he will, in fact, do that. But I just think from an optic standpoint, that's been the issue with Zeke all along, is are some of these issues criminal? Take out the allegations from Ohio State. They've just been an optics issue, yep. and it's a headache mm-hmm. for Jerry Jones. And this feels like yet another headache. As it was told to me, it's just not a good look. Mm. You know optics I don't like, Jane? <laughs> Looking at my bank account. <laughs> I don't see no influx or no, fr- fr- no fresh cash in there. The optics. I don't oh. like them optics. Did you like them no optics? Mm. I don't like That's them optics. That's where his you know management's what? coming from. I love the optics of Jason <laughs> Witten has returned. And he oh, is, but- he's a better tight end than the guy across the oh, table. From wow. Him. Jane. Yeah. What, what have you seen? You, yeah. you were at camp every so, day. What, so what, what, do you what see? has the impact yeah. been of Jason's return to yeah. the locker room and the field? You know, it's interesting. That was one of the best kept secrets at Combine. Mm-hmm. Huh. And when that broke, I was over actually talking to Demarcus's Lor- Demarcus Lawrence's agent about his deal. So I run over to the facility and started talking to a couple of my sources on that. 
that was a real behind the scenes tough decision for Jason Witten. A lot of people thought Jerry Jones was saving him from ESPN. That was not the case. Witten struggled with that. He felt like he had gas left in the tank and he felt a sense of relief when he came back to camp. He looks and feels younger, which is odd really? to me, Ooh. having stepped away from the game right. yeah. uh, this last year. But what he's done, I think, is push these young guys, Blake Jarwin, who we saw really impressed in the regular season finale against the Giants. The split in the building was, now wait a minute, Witten never comes off the field. This was our issue. We've got these young guys behind him. What I've seen from Witten is him embracing that role. He is mm. constantly chirping at the staff. He's chirping at the young guys. And I'm seeing him push guys like Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin mm. in camp. So I think this is a good thing from the Cowboys. He's sort of taken on this Sean Lee yeah. player hybrid role. Right. And I think that offense really needed some veteran leadership. They were so young last year. Mm. Uh, without Jason Witten in the locker room. So I actually think it's been a good thing for them. Mm, good right. stuff. Very good. Jane, yeah. so good to have you. I know Skip <laughs> is going to like what you said yeah, about this I team. I feel a lot better now. Have, thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.